Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? This is another paid request, this time for Eric. Thanks for that. For those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, reviews, re-reviews, randomness, out of the blueness, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for a 2014 film called Niner. Now, I've never heard of this film, but now I know why. It was a central Michigan... Central Michigan University Film Project. And a film student from there made this movie. And uh, I was not a fan of it. I mean, it, it's hard to get that mad because it is, again, a film student project. But it's one that's out there. It was... the, the Eric gave me the link on Vimeo. I don't know if you're in the film. I don't know if you're part of the production to Eric. I don't know if... He's from Central Michigan. I don't know how he found this film, where he found this film. If you're a fan of the film, that's cool. Teach their own. That's why, you know, with film student projects, I, I don't want... I'll do it if it's a paid request. I'll do it. It's just I don't seek them out on my own because I know, with rare exceptions, they're just... You know, they're... amateurish. Not in terms of, like, the production, they got some nice, high-quality cameras, to be fair. You know, it tried to tell a story, grinded for too long, for two hours, and I, that's one of the issues. It did not need to be almost two hours long. But what really hurt the film is, I can't even tell you if the plot, the script, was poor or not poor. Because the acting is what brought this down. And that's because, again, it's a film, you know, school project that the acting is very bad. I was going to try to sugarcoat it. People who see this probably don't get mad. But I think the acting is really bad. Will you be a... I, I would not be a good actor. That's why I don't act. But I don't think any of these people were good actors either. The, the plot of the film, this girl wakes up. We find out later she's been drugged. She walks downstairs. First off, the way she wakes up is weird because she has her eyes open like this. Then she's like... <coughs> I'm like... So she's not down, but her eyes are open. I know sometimes you can faint, and you can faint with your eyes open. It's rare, but it can happen. But later on, we find out she was given a sleeping pill. And when she gets down, when we see the, the lead up to this later, she gets on the ground and we she the wide shot, her eyes are closed. So, later on, it's a sleeping pill, number one. So when you sleep, usually you And then when she's in the... Like now you see in the wide shot, her eyes are closed like this. So I don't know how that led from that to her eyes are open. <sighs> I'm like, I thought there was going to be something more to that, as the wire eyes were, no, it just is. So she walks downstairs, for some reason, even though she walks towards the kitchen, she doesn't see all these eggshells on the ground. I'm like, she must have like the worst peripheral vision I've seen of a character in a while. Peripheral, it, it, not in her vocabulary, I guess. She looks, I did. she walks to the kitchen... Like, when you look at the kitchen, you notice, people say, well, she's half, she's just got out of being drugged by a sleeping pill. Okay. So she steps on these eight shells, and she realizes there's something going on. She goes outside, there's these two guys cleaning up blood, there's these two guys over there, and one of the guys says, you need to run. So, she doesn't have a cell phone. She doesn't get a cell phone. She doesn't try to call a cop. She doesn't try to get into a car, a vehicle of any sort. She just decides to book it bare feet into the woods. I'm like, again, there's not a car you get into. There's not any keys to a car. Or the guy could give you, I don't know, a, a cell phone of any sort. That I don't know. She just runs, hightails it. Meanwhile, we have this top name Raleigh Niner, that's a crazy name, Raleigh Niner, who, oh, is this cop who, 
he's going to be on trial later because he supposedly threw a guy out a out a window and he is a cop on the edge. But this cop on the edge, number one, the actor they got for him is not that great at all. He's very wooden. And he doesn't seem like a cop on the edge. He seems like an accountant. He seems like the type of guy you would hire to be a, an accountant. And he has his girlfriend who's a nurse. And like they have this back and forth in a car. And it's just off. The acting is off. I mean... I'd just say film school quality, but some people probably argue, well, there's film students' movies I've seen that are better. I mean, I've seen films with found footage. Blair Witch Project. That was better, acting-wise. Natural. These actors don't seem natural at all. And their delivery of dialogue... Again, the top seems like more of an accountant. So the two are driving... And they find this girl wandering around. And they try to talk to her, but she's a bit out of it. And so the, our cop is trying to step her out of it. And then he says lines like, Well, my friend is Marvin from Mars. I'm Bugs Bunny. And I, maybe that was the movie trying to be funny or trying to say something stupid to get her out of her comatose. But it just came off as a just a stupid line. This is Marvin from Mars. I'm Bugs Bunny. Yeah, and I'm Elmer Fudd. And the music. I think the music was especially bad in this film. Because uh, there's a bit where the cop is telling his wife the story about beating this guy up. And finding out he had, his gun was an airsoft. While he's talking to the girl, there would be times like, it's just his face. The camera's on his face, right? Talking to his girlfriend, fiance, whatever you want to call it. And the music is like this over-the-top guitar, almost like from a 70s cop show, but not quite. It's just on the guy's face talking. When it should be more like a softer score to get the idea that this is a guy that he could have killed, he could have shot, but he realized the gun was a toy or just, you know, a BB gun. And I maybe the store would com compliment that kind of realization and oh my god, I could have done something really bad to the guy. But no, it's like do 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 or loud horns. Boom boom. Boom, 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 And he's telling a story about the guy who he says jumped out a window and is like, boom, 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 boom. The music just, I don't think complimented the film well. So then the, the girl's family's been killed. The bodies, I guess, were buried there. I don't know why you would take the time to bury the bodies there. I mean, the bodies would get found out easily anyway. So it's like, well, what's the point of burying the bodies there in their own, in their own backyard, but okay. Because you know, they get found out anyway. So the cop is looking into it. He finds the girl's boyfriend, who's part of this Ford group, who's very sorry about what happened, but the cops try to get to him, and so he pretends to be drunk, like a drunk, because he set up this meeting, hey, how's it going, man? Doing a bad job pretending to be drunk. And for what? Like, this is a really shitty cop. That's another thing, this cop is sucks at his job. He's a really shitty cop. Because he pretends to be drunk, like, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? He, he gets close to the guy. He even touches the guy. But then he turns his back on the guy. For the guy then to pull the gun on him and go, Hey, what's your deal, man? And then the cop puts his hands up. I'm like, what was the point of pretending to be drunk in the first place? Okay, you don't pretend to be drunk to walk up to the guy. And you even touch the guy. You could like grab him, take him down. 
Oh, oh, you had a gun on here, huh? What's the deal with this? Why you pretend to be drawn that you're close to him? You don't you know, stop him, take him down. There's not like a cop that plays by the rules. Quite the opposite. But he's like, gets drawn, hey, I'm going, buddy. Bill. And then he turns his back on him and walks away there. For the guy to be like, I'm like, what the fuck is the deal? What was the point of him pretending to be drunk in the first place? So then, they go in her car, the guy, the boyfriend is upset about what happened, and the, the guy was involved with these other bad guys, and they won some people killed. And I'm not going to go into the plot, because it's really not that interesting of a plot. You know, some, oh, it's got all these twists and turns. Not really. It doesn't really have a lot of twists and turns. I don't know what twists and turns they're talking about. Spoilers. They, the bad guy, the main bad guy, you find out that his brother and others were killed a year or two ago. One of the people that told the cops was this boyfriend character. So it's like, okay, I'm going to make the people you know hurt. So that's why I killed the girlfriend's family and tried, trying to kill the girlfriend. The boyfriend feels guilty. You find out later he kills himself in the car. That's where you did like the flashback of, oh, he gave his girlfriend a sleeping pill. And then she, again, she lies down on the bathroom floor, her eyes closed, but then at the beginning of the film, her eyes are open. <laughs> that was just a weird way to open it. And then, like, his fiance, his girlfriend, they do, like, a jo they do a job of trying to build her up at the beginning with this initial conversation, and then, idea what, he goes into a house, they find this girl who is bloodied up, goes to this place, lets the nurse come along with him, not stay in the car, uh, lock the doors, whatever, no, you come with me into this place that could be a murderer, a killer, a robber. So that was, that was great. They have bring your girlfriend with you into a potential crime scene. That makes a lot of fucking sense. I forgot to mention that part of the beginning. That makes a lot of damn sense. <laughs> again, my girlfriend, who, yeah, she's a nurse, but yeah, you come along. Not again, you are staying here, or I will call you. Yeah. He better be glad there wasn't a guy around the corner. Oh, I got your girl now, cop. Maybe that's why she dumps his ass. Because then, after like a... Sh people think that he killed the guy in the car. I mean, we find out later that the guy shot himself. But people think he did. And then the girlfriend's like, you did it, didn't you? And have a fight in a bar. And then you never see that girl again. And I'm like, well, what was the point of like building this fiancé up? And then you never see this woman again. You never see this character again. Never like, oh, I was wrong, or she tries to come to her senses, or she... No, there's like, that character just disappears. Just disappears, never to be heard from again. I'm like, okay. I didn't do a job developing and taking the time to develop this, and then... Like, the cop never, like, attempts to call her, or looks at a picture of her. Like, no, just... As she's gone, it's like she never existed in the movie. And that's like within 30 minutes of the film, or I can't remember time line wise. Maybe longer, maybe halfway through. And yeah, it's just a bad job of stuff. Like there's this suspect. Like the, the girl, the, the teen girl, goes to his place, the cop's place later. And this is a girl that's been labeled a potential suspect. And he even says, well, I'm not quite sure if you're involved or not. But he still left his fucking gun on the table while this girl walks in. And he walks away and he still left his gun on the table. What if she was a killer? Grab the gun. Shot you in the face. <laughs> then you're dead, Fred. Then you have this try and there's no action. There's no suspense. It, because of his, it's a student film. There's no action. There's no excitement. 
It's going on for way too long. It does not need to be two fucking hours. I'm sorry, it doesn't. And it's just not much happening. There's not much happening. And when you have a plot that just kind of, to me, bare bones. You have a lead character that's not likable. I don't really find him likable at all. And again, you need an actor. Okay, if you look at Cop with James Woods. That's how you do it. You just say the plot is typical, but you get an actor that just nails it, and you have an ending that just is... If you've seen Cop with James Woods, you know what that ending is. I know that's not fair, because that's a bigger production. But that's what I mean is, it makes you go, what was the point of this being made in the first place? I read one review who said, these actors would not have been hired if it wasn't for this production. And that's mean to say, but it's true. They really bring it down. And so you're just watching a bunch of actors that are either amateur or so-so. Like the teen girl who was the potential suspect, but it's her family that was killed. She's so-so. The cop is really bad. That he would. And it's like a... A bad Donnie Wahlberg mixed in with a... Because I think Donnie Wahlberg's actually a good actor. He's a bad Donnie Wahlberg mixed in with an accountant. And then there's this trial that I don't give a fuck because we don't care about the lead character. And he blackmails this other suspect to tell him that, oh yeah, he didn't throw this guy out the window. The guy jumped. He blackmailed him so he could get out. But then you have these other two cops who are even lousier actors who are looked into this case and they get shot and killed for their... I always, I thought, oh, they got, sh well, they were really shitty actors, they got killed for it. <laughs> like the, the bad guy, which I would say the bad guy, I guess, was the best actor in the movie. Or he was the most tolerable. I do think the main villain is the most tolerable, tolerable of the actors. The point I said, well, three times now, tolerable. That's how tolerable he is. I keep repeating the word. Tolerable, tolerable, tolerable. Because it's like, oh wow, here's someone who's okay. The teen girl, she's very. She, I guess, so so. And again, maybe that actor's like, hey, I'm doing all right. These two cops are doing especially poor. That's one of the, like, the only action bits in the movie. And then, spoiler alert, because fuck you, why not? Super spoilers. There's this meeting where one bad guy is with the other bad guy. What about the, the third guy? I forget what happened to the other guy. I forget. Because I said four people. I forget, honestly, what happened to the third one. But it's like, there's two guys. One has the girl. One is the main bad guy. The top is there. Shoots one. Has the other. You go towards that girl, and she'll make a decision on what happens to you. Which, again, is a stupid thing for a cop to do, because the guy walks to the car, and, like, goes in the car. What if the guy had, I don't know, a hidden gun? What if he had a knife in his pants, and he goes to the car, and they did, I got the knife on the neck. Because the cop just lets the guy walk towards the car, and, like, the guy's even going into the car, because the girl's in the car. He just rushed in, because the door would have blocked the gunshot, and, like, got the knife on the gun, you know. Knife on her, or maybe she had a hidden gun. Maybe had a gun in his, one of those little guns. Like, such a shitty cop. Chris stabbed her inside the car. But no, none of that happens. The girl gets a gun, shoots the guy. Then the cop just grabs a gun and just drops it on the guy's hand. And then they walk away. And I'm thinking, apparently this movie doesn't know a thing called fingerprints. <laughs> I mean, your fingerprints are on the gun. I think some of her fingerprints are on it, too. 
Uh, they could look at the gun and be like, hmm, how come all these other fingerprints are on it? We didn't even see him, like, clean the gun. Like, clean the gun and then put it in the guy's hand. Also, there's, like, a phone. And there's, like, a phone left behind. I'm like, weren't some of you guys also touching the, the phone? But apparently, the movie forgot what f the people check for fingerprints. Nope. Give me that gun. Just drop in the guy's hand. It drops. <laughs> and then, uh, the girl's doing fine with her fucking, you know, with her aunt and uncle or, or grand. I can't believe it. Uh, I forget if it was her grandparents or aunt or uncle. Might, might have been her grandparents. I can't, I can't remember. And they have a horse. And the top, he fucks off. You just get a flashback that he didn't shoot the kid in the car. The guy shot himself. Oh, because he was talking to uh, his captain. And you get the idea that his captain kind of knows what happened, but he just, oh, you sly dog, you, you know. So again, it's, you have a cop who's really bad at his job, who won't clean fingerprints, just leaves guns there, won't, will take his go for an into a fucking crime scene at the beginning of the film, will just leave, let a bad guy walk into a car that a girl is in, that will just do stupid shit, you have terrible acting, you have a store that at times is inappropriate, and you have a... F Running time is way too long at two hours. It's way too long. And it's boring. It's completely boring. And stupid lines like, hey, I'm Bugs Bunny. Yeah, I'm Captain Kirk. This is my friend Mr. Spock. Give him a Vulcan nerve pinch. Great, now he fell on his boom box and he got knocked out. Niner. If you did a shiner, did you did the movie? Did you punch the fuck out, Niner? Because those guys they rolling Niner. I rather watch a game of the fucking San Francisco Forty Niners, or the Niner Forty Nine and fucking Scooby Doo. That had more of a fucking interesting plot. That's episode Scooby Doo with the the Niner Forty Niner than this fucking movie. I don't. I, I'm, yeah, I'm being mean to say, hey, come on, man, it's a Central Michigan film. I don't give a fuck. It was two hours, it was boring as shit. And the acting sucked. And if the director gets mad, I apologize. But I'm not going to apologize because I'm being honest. And I'm not going to fucking lie to people. You never made anything, you're right. But I never made anything shitty either. At least movie-wise. So. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.